This is the Podcraft Beer Show for Memorial Day, Monday, May 31st, 2021. Episode 46, Deep Dives into Four Delicious Craft Beers from the New Alpine Brewery, Michelhaney. This is the Podcraft Beer Show. I'm your host, Chris. We got your other host, Charlie. It's me. We got tech guy, Steve. Hello. A couple of special guests. We got Josh in the house with us. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me again. And we got Jake here. A couple of going, Jake? gangster beer drinkers. <laughs> so today, gentlemen, the, uh, there's a new sheriff in town. McElhaney uh, Brewing Company. Open. Yes, sir. Bobber. Let me tell you. Long time coming. I think this was... Uh, Something I expected years ago, but Let's glad it's finally it. happened. Beer. So that's uh, that's going to be our focus today. We uh, we have four of their offerings today. We have their uh, we have a blonde ale, pale ale, an IPA, and a, and a double IPA. I'm gonna pass this around the room, boys. Let me tell you, I like this beer. What are you starting with, Charlie? I think that the bells. Uh... The Bell's Bluff. Bell's, Bell's Bluff. Bluff. Yeah. So they list this as a crisp and refreshing blonde ale. Comes in at 5%. It is crisp. It is refreshing. And it is ale. Tastes fantastic. My thing was is that I didn't recognize the names like you did. So, I mean, it was like a Jeopardy board up there to me. So I was, um, I just looked at what they explained it to be and I went for this one first. This beer actually comes in several fruited flavors too, so take your pick. So I like the straight up one. So they're fruit in the beer. The, yeah, they have fruit beer. It's fruit actually, fruit. but yeah. So they have a few different. Uh, this Bell's Bluff. They, I mean, they had. Um, they probably had ten or eleven beers on tap. Can I get a glass? Oh, oh come on! Really? Who Party did that? Foul. Who did not prep Tech Guy Steve? It was me. I, know, I was looking I around. I'm like, none of us got glass. I just had my one from the cask when I first. I totally up. did. I totally just go. like I finished my. Oh yeah, that's my, a good I one too. I finished my pregame and poured <laughs> right into my pregame. <laughs> <laughs> Poor so they, guy. They, they have a uh, uh, this this Bell's <laughs> Bluff. They have um, a vanilla, uh, raspberry, uh, apricot. Yeah. Uh, renditions of this. I think those are going to be pretty tasty, actually. I'm intrigued by the vanilla. I know we don't have it here, but it's kind of making that was someone that because this would lend itself to kind of like a yeah Vienna cream lager. Ale. Yeah, like it's it's an ale, but it's it's a light ale. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have to make a trip. Oh shucks, hate it when that has to happen. Mm. Wow. That's so good. so Chris, you went there to pick it up. Where's the uh, where is this located at? So the original uh, Alpine Brew House, and, and uh, they're brewing in the original original location. That's the awesome. brewery when they when they first opened, uh, their their brewery was on the far end, the same place. Brewery. Yeah, there was an old bookstore and a hair salon, and then there was the pub. There nice. used to be a restaurant there called McGuffey's. You get some killer shakes from that place, but no longer. So when when Green Flash took over uh, and they opened up the new restaurant. They um, at that point they turned the old pub into that tasting room, uh, so it's set up the same way. It's a tasting room now. You know, there's no restaurant on site, um, but the back the, the the back patio had been completely redone. I mean, it was aw- it was awesome being there. It's it worth the trip. Yeah, it's worth the trip. Absolutely. Oh, for sure. Right. Just to taste this. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was so much fun to, to go into. What well, I mean, it it reminded me of like going into a, a beer release at um, at Alpine, like seven or eight ten years, years ago, ago yeah. when you'd go in on a saturday and there'd be like people waiting down the street i mean there wasn't people waiting down the street but there there like when, when we were getting packed. ready to leave this was two o'clock in the afternoon uh, and there was uh, the parking lot was packed and they're like by the time we were leaving at like three thirty, there was like a line to the door i mean it was you know i i just harken back you know exponential used to come out and they used to get the line people showing yeah. up at Two, three, four o'clock in the morning to line yeah. up to get, you know, the one batch a year that they made of exponential. 
And so that, that's fun to hear. I'm gl- I'm glad they're back. I, you know, the green, the whole green flash Alpine brewing thing. I was, you know, it's hopeful it was going to be something, um, but it was almost it was almost a sad moment for me when it when it happened because it's like this guy is an iconic East County brewer that really brought a lot of different ideas to the brewing industry and he you know you know whatever you know let it go to somebody else well and i'm just really glad he's back i thought it would happen sooner than this yeah and i'm just glad it's happened i'll tell you the uh the backstory on my end is when i was uh drinking uh green flash west coast ipa my buddy uh was a part owner there at one time long long time ago and uh I said, what do you think of Alpine? He's all like, that guy's a rock star, and he doesn't even know it, you know. He's putting out just these phenomenal beers, and he's this tiny little brewery up in Alpine. Well, everybody knows Alpine now, so it it, it was definitely a shock when they uh, green flash bottom, but uh, now they're back. I like it. I like it a lot. This is this is my, my drink for this... Uh, this choice uh, out of the four we're going to do today, I pick this one. Yeah, so this is super light. Yeah, this is a summer drinker. Like I'm like, this is, you know, a late spring, kind of like refreshing, crisp. I just, uh, I really like it. It's not, you know, it's not a heavy flavor profile, but it's yeah. definitely like somebody who's not into like a heavy hoppy beer. This is a great entry like level beer. Yeah. Yeah, it almost. I was. I, I was gonna say Kolsch. Right. That's why it's like the Vienna Lager kind of yeah. like kind of came to mind on it. Um, and it is. It's just. It's a light, crisp beer. It's very well balanced. It's not super hoppy. It's not super malty. It's just. You know, it's what you would expect from him coming back in. Like the guy knows how to make good beer, and so like I. I really think like no matter the style, he's gonna do a a, a good job at it. Like it's not gonna be. Odd. You're not going to be like, eh. He's like, I could drink this all day and yeah. not have a problem with it. <laughs> Jake gives it a thumbs up. Yeah, I agree. That is a that I is like an all day. It. I'm a big fan do, of that. Do we have an ABV on that? Not that 5%, I care. Five percent. Five percent. Straight up five percent. And um, that's a very crushable five percenter. Yeah, it's. Uh, I always think like five percent. It's just gonna. It's just got a, such a mild taste to it that I love it. I mean, it's just there's no sharp hoppiness, no bitter aftertaste. It's just real mild. It's, it's kind of like a hazy almost. Well, I, I would I would actually guess there's some people that would drink this and almost put this into the lager yeah. category. It's such a well done ale. I mean, it's it's good. Okay, we're gonna go. Um, this next beer is Palo Verde, and it is, uh, ooh, this is a little rich. Um, this is the Palo Verde Pale Ale. That's uh, an American Pale Ale with Centennial and Mosaic hops. Uh, coming in at 5.6% ABV. Yeah, we jumped up a little bit on this one. This, uh, this one already on the nose, you can smell... The hop. That is going to be a lot more hop profile in this one already. I can just, I haven't tasted it yet, but the smell alone just kind of like, Ooh, hey, hops, I'm here. Yeah, I I think, you know, they. so one, at one point, Alpine on, on Beer Advocates, like top 250, had like five of the um, the top 100 IPAs, right? Like, yeah. Um, like Nelson was in there, Duet, Exponential Hoppiness, Hoppy Birthday. Right, like anything they anything they'd make. My favorite that, that they were doing at that point was like just their hoppy pale ales or whatever, like Truck Trail or Truck whatever Trail, they came yeah. out later, like Babyface. What yeah. was it? There was, was one. Was Windows up be pre or post? Uh, it was post. Okay, that was another one. I mean, you know, but you know, the brewer was still there. But Windows up was another one that was kind of like in that realm of like, oh man, that's just a drinker. Like yeah, it's. I think- at that point, you know, when they when they first did that transition, they were brewing, um, like, at Green Flash, it was just, like, Duet, uh, Nelson, and Pure Happiness. Or, uh, Pure Happiness, Happy Birthday, and uh, yeah. Nelson, I think, yeah. were, were the three, right? So you were still getting, like, beers that were brewed up at at the old brewery. Old place, yeah. Right? And then, um, 
Because there was questions of like you you make a beer in a certain location, then you take it to another facility with another engine, right? Is it going to end up being the same beer? You know, like the recipe could be the same, but you're making on totally different equipment. It's you're you're you know making on a bigger scale. Well, the size of those breweries <coughs> couldn't be any more any more different. Right? You know, I mean, they had like that old like piecemeal system that they three had barrel at, system. I think um, it's only three up there. I thought they had a tiny. seven. It was tiny. I think they have a fifteen now. Fifteen now. Um, but the, um, yeah, but it was just that old system was put together. Uh, I was talking to Pat was was at that uh, um, that comedy show last night. I was talking to him for a few minutes, and he had mentioned how um, they had uh, they brewed one time when when they shut down. I think there was one time they brewed after they had fully taken over, and somebody burnt themselves on the on the system, and they shut down and said no more no more no brewing. No more brewing there. Yeah, so they, when they came in, like all the brewing equipment was just uh, was shot, rusted out. Yeah. Wow. So, ba- so back to this beer, um, it's delightful. It's subtle hoppiness. I always um, damn these guys. I'm finally. I, this is making me so excited because I've always looked <laughs> for that session IPA that has the right flavor profile for the bitterness. Right. Like you want the I want. I want the double IPA flavor in a five point five six seven eight. Right. This has a full flavored beer, like super hot. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's it's so, not it's not overly hoppy. It's not like I wouldn't put it in the double IPA, but I would definitely put this in like an IPA flavor profile in terms of hoppiness at a five point six percent. Right. Well done, sir. Yeah. yeah. No, that's pretty it's good. I don't. I don't know that I prefer it over the first one we had, but. It is good. The, you know, first, like, the first one was really good. Yeah. Yeah, it was you super. Drink, like You could drink that all day long. All day long. Huh? Just sitting around the pool. So like this, this is a legit IPA flavor profile at 5.6. Yeah, no, it's that's phenomenal. That's what's crazy to me a little bit on this beer because I'm drinking this thinking of things like Stone IPA or West Coast IPA that are at 6.5%, 7%. Yet I'm... I'm I'm enjoying this at six point five. This is right. This is a session IPA that tastes like an actual IPA. It says it's a session. Uh, it's a, a pale ale. Well, it's a pale, pale ale, pale but ale, it, like it's a, it's not like a five. A it's San a, Diego pale ale. Yeah, it's a, but it's not. It's it's not an overpower. It's not. I can drink two or three of these a night. No, and, I understand and still it. Get up in the morning. I understand it. Yeah, yeah it's no, not. It's a great beer, right? Like it doesn't. It's not not so heavy that. Uh, I mean, I think you know when you. I think this is more of a summer beer for me. It had to be really hot. I love that that uh, hop combination as well. I am loving the aftertaste on this. Yeah, that, that bitterness it's of so an IPA. Deep. It's deep. Yeah, I Very it's late. it's got a late bitterness like an IPA, but it's five point. I think they're mismarked this. There's Maybe no I'm way just, this is five point six. I'm not just tasting the uh, bitter. I'm not tasting the bitterness. I don't know what I'm. I don't know exactly what I'm tasting. It's uh, it's not my uh, out of the first two. That one is number two out of the two. I love this beer. I'm a fan. They should can this night. I, I, I hope that they can. You know, I, I hope they can today. You know, like um, they're bottlers. They're not canners. They well, were. Everybody was bottlers at yeah. that time. Nobody yeah. was canning. Yeah. Beer. I guess they do have cans. I've seen cans like when um, when they were like when they were open as the brewery. Right. When yeah. We were going up there. Everybody. Everything Every, was bombers. Everything yeah. was twenty twos. Like I, we used to have a fantasy league like getting a 22 was actually better than getting the four pack or the six pack 16s and 12s because that was the good beers ended up being 22s i i i mean i hope that they transition into that canning because right. this to me would be a go-to 5.6 ipa i mean like no, it'd be kill- you know and i think it's you know it's quite a bit different today you know like um I mean, you have mobile canneries, right? Like everybody was bottling their own beers at that point. Right? Yeah. So the um, one at a time, right? <laughs> what? Um, it's you were figuring out the names of the beers to the comparable ones that they used to have, uh-huh. and I was like, I don't understand it at all. I couldn't figure it out. It was like crossword puzzle to me. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't remember having something like this from them. At five point six, you know, I was I was trying to look around for something like you know I'd had a few of their um a uh, few of their pale ales. I was I was looking at like like Alpine's pale ales, right? They had like Babyface. I remember that um 
that was a pale ale that I loved. It was like Nelson, but it was like a pale ale. It was a, a session version of Nelson. Yeah. But then, like, um, isn't uh, Truck Trail? Isn't that a? Uh, I mean, they had a few different, a few different pale ales, but nothing that they that they made consistently. I don't think Happy Birthday. But that was like a medley of hops. Yeah, there was like all kinds. It was of just like kind of what? What do we have in the storehouse? <laughs> yeah, there was, uh, <laughs> that was phenomenal. That was super. super I good I thing. really liked that one. I I mean I I've liked both of them so far, but I really I mean. I'm excited about that one because it's, I mean, Jake can attest to this, a 5.6 that tastes like a 7, that's that's not a bad, that's not a bad go. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the next beer that we have, this is, uh, um, it was the Rye IPA. Months. Months. The, um, it's a little cloudy, but it's. Pretty doggone delicious. So this New Zealand hop dry, uh, rye IPA with uh, Nectaron and, and Nelson hops. I just dig the smell. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. So it, that, it does smoke. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's unique. I don't know what it is. I, there's not too many beers. It's that, it's that rye spice, man. That's it. Yeah, you get the. It's that rye spice, it, which gives the haziness too. The rye, will, the rye grain will do that. I know, but it's just, it's almost a, a, a bouquet of. Ah, different hops. I don't know. So you got that that nectar on should give you like some some peach kind of melon flavors and melon. It's a oh, man. That's taste. I mean, it's not a hazy, right? It's it's not. It's no, a rye yeah, IPA. It's a rye IPA. Which like this was. This is what you give. You got to give the the name of the beer that this is represent. Well, so Nelson was. Um, Nelson was was their IPA, right? Like right. Was there was their rye their go to. Like you would like if you saw Nelson on the shelf, you were grabbing a twenty two of that. Correct. Yeah, yeah. I like Nelson. Wow. I like this more than well, or or you know their their rye IPA um, more than uh, Duet or whatever that that was. I, I like Duet. This is this is so good. This I am so good. So this is I. Uh, I'm so stoked. Their beer is good. Because I I just feel like there's a there's well, a, like a, a rejuvenation. It's the same beers I, though. I feel like Alpine's coming back. Like I feel it like is this, this is a, this is uh, like what I remember Alpine Brewing doing for me early on in my beer craft. Your youth, youth. Like this is like <laughs> your youth. May, maybe it is a little bit of like nostalgia to it, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, but it's got to be. No, that's what I had thought. Like you know, like that was the first. I mean, I think. Ballast Point was the first brewery that I that I really like. You know, like they had a, a lot of good beers, right? Sculpin, yeah, Sculpin. It's the it's the first beer that's empty. <laughs> <laughs> that one didn't make it around. But the, um, I think Alpine was the first brewery like I fell in love with, right? Like I used to hit that thing every time I was coming back from from work from uh, uh, from El Sueto. El, El Centro, stop in, get some chicken The armpit wings. of California. Man. Chicken wings and beer. Can't beat it. I remember stopping there a couple times. Uh, my uh, favorite thing to do was always get the uh, chef special. I uh, had a cousin-in-law that worked there. And he's like, I don't care what you, what, what you want to eat whenever you go. Like, he just, this was just like, just get the chef special. If they can find that, like that, would, but it was always like chef special and a Nelson. Like that was that yeah. was my go to, whatever. Every time I was there, yeah. Have you had you ever eaten there? Yeah, we did. Yeah, I mean it was phenomenal. Yeah, it was great. Did you go to the the old pub or the new one? The new one. Okay, I would. T- yeah, new one's good. It is old yeah. one. Was Dice's dude? That thing was the. Um, the new one, they have poutine. I don't know if they have poutine at. The, uh, yeah, they did have it at the old one, only on Sundays. <laughs> I never had it there, but they they do have it at the at the um, with the others. It used but, to be the bread basket that store. That, yeah, you know. Okay, so funny story about that. That is where I took my wife on our first date. <laughs> the bread basket. The bread basket. <laughs> wow. You know, Al, it, just like Alpine ended up in the place I took my wife to the. Just, 
for some, our first date. Some so, like, Joey there response there. Like, there. Anniversary. Yeah. There's a, there's an ad, there was an anniversary well, he did there. Spend the gas was that the, get up the hill. Was that the, was that the classiest restaurant you could find between uh, <laughs> you know what? It your was house funny. and El- <laughs> <laughs> the bread. And it, it was it was a it was a opportunistic opportunity. I, I was uh, I worked nights, I like worked nights bread. and afternoons. <laughs> so it was like we went out for brunch for our oh, first okay. date. And so we went to the bread basket. All right. Yeah. Which which I knew about because and this is go this may be even worse of the story, but I knew that because my grandmother and my aunt used to go out there every Thursday for brunch. <laughs> good you got a good recommendation <laughs> for your grandma and your aunt. I was like, hey, I know a place we could drive to and talk in the car. And, and now like, we can go there and drink trip. beer on our anniversary. And you know what? She said yes. Yeah. So It what? all worked out. Doggone it. Lucky guy. Now, this is a delicious beer. This. If I were, if I were to drink... I still like the first one, but this would be my number two out of the four. Dude, I, I am not disappointed in this at all. I'm... I'm pretty stoked about this. I think uh, this is another. I I love that there's another brewery that's popped up, and you know we expected this from him, right? If he was going to start a brewery again, it wasn't going to suck. We like, had the expectation that it yeah. would be that same quality of beer that they were putting out. But also, seven years. also to have that expectation and deliver on it. Like for me, I've had three of their beers, not disappointed any of it. Nothing's been like when I went to, I've gone to some breweries when they open up in a month after, you're just like, mm, I don't know if I want another, go back, you know? Right. And this is like, I just want more, more, please. Yes. It's good. It's really good. Yeah. No, that's a good beer. I think the, um, you know, that rye plays really well with the, um, it's with unique. The Nelson, Nelson Hops. It's very unique oh, for me. Spiciness. True, okay, true family craft. And did you get the ABV on that last one? I think it was seven something. Seven point one. That's that's still approachable, you know. Okay, well we're stepping it up from there. So uh-huh. what do we got here? This is called Wild Child. So Wild Child's their uh, their double IPA. This is a West Coast double IPA. So not a yeah. little. Uh, we we got a Wild Child double IPA. This is a, a a West Coast double IPA with Columbus Citra, Mosaic, and Amarillo hops. Wow, this is gonna be delish. It's called doubling your voice. What's that? We're doing the little Frankie Valley doubling your voice. Frankie <laughs> Valley, <laughs> Sherry baby. So the um, this was the beer. So Charlie mentioned that that you know we were kind of I, I was trying to figure out like. Like what? What style of beer was was the Alpine beer, and then you know where where they're at now, I guess right. So like, I was suspecting this was probably uh, like Bad Boy, which was their their double, right? It looks pretty bad. It's boy. a, it's funny. It is it's not a rich golden it is, beer. It man. is. Um, I won't say thick, but it is a. Uh, it's a, it's a dark. It's got the, it definitely uh, has some body to it. Last one, mainly one? to get the alcohol level up to eight point five. Um, it, I think I'm pretty excited about it. It's it smells and looks like a traditional double San Diego IPA. Yeah, it is. That's rich. That tastes super rich. Wow, I'm impressed with this one because I didn't taste this. Yeah, it's so. a good beer, huh? They, the lady gave me a little taster of that. I'm ready. To, oh, I thought I'm ready. I to, thought you had a, a pint of it. No, I'm re- just a little taste. I'm ready to cuddle with this beer and take cuddle. a nap because that's about what it's going to do to me. Yeah, it's a, it's it's definitely a a naparoni. <sighs> it smells really fantastic. The taste is super on point. Smooth too. Mm-hmm. I I am so excited. There is this. there is not a stitch of aftertaste. So for we, me. we, mind you, a brewery oh, just can. you you went and got this beer. How many days? After, first day they were open. Uh, Wednesday we Wednesday. picked it. Yeah, so the day after they had opened. Day after they had opened. Yeah, we parked the when scooter. Was, <laughs> when was the last beer. time you went to a brewery? The day they opened, two days after they opened, had four beers in every single one of them. Would would be this quality. Yeah, no, I would say that I I, uh, um, I don't know that that's like 
the normal expectation, right? Yeah. Never. No. Usually, because like a lot of breweries, you know, like will open up and there's like four or five beers on the board, right? Like they just kind of hit every one of each and, style and, and open the doors. And one of them is okay. Yeah. We've just had four beers. And I'm not kidding you. If I, all of these beers have been delicious. Like they're. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this is number one on my uh, chart. Then that Bell's one. Then down from there it would have been the uh, the Rye, and then oh, what was that other one? What was the name of the other one? The uh, Rye one? Palo Verde. Uh huh. Is that the Rye? No, that was the Pale Ale. The Mint Months. Months. I like the months, and then the the Palo Verde is going to be number four out of these. That's how I'm going to list them. I I'm just excited for what's going to come from this brewery. That's no, absolutely. If this is just the start, yeah, yeah. If you rolled out like okay, so how many beers did they have on tap? I know they had the variations of the blonde. They had four different types of the blonde. Other than that, what did they, they had have? Eight well, beers. No, three of them. So they, had, they had they had eleven or. Uh, they had uh, eleven beers. Okay, uh, four of those were the 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 bells, and then three variants. But then they had um, uh, they had that wild child months, which is the the New Zealand. They had a West Coast IPA, a pale ale, a stout, uh, an Irish red ale. You didn't get the stout. We didn't get the uh, the the Irish stout. I passed on the stout to grab the. So uh, what are we doing Sunday afternoon? Yeah, right. yeah. I can tell you what we're doing. We're drinking the release from Mostra Mont. Mostra, Moxa, and Jay Wakefield. We're picking up a bottle of that tomorrow. Huh. Charlie's mm. got big plans for this. Guess so. That's how we roll. Release. I'm a. I'm pretty excited about this. I. I love a new brewery opening. That's always exciting. Um, I. I really love a new brewery opening, and I've had four of their beers, and none of them have disappointed. That no, to me is, is like really good. Well, I, I just go back to like I had breweries with high hopes that you go to and you like you have some beers and you're like, Ugh. Ugh. you know, we've we've had some tasting like copper pennies, right, Jake? Oh, yeah, we don't mention that. We don't here. talk about that brewery anymore. Yeah, um, but we've also had some where I've gone in and I've like I've got the flight. You know, you get the flight and you're just like, don't get the halfway villager. through. You're like, okay, what what guest taps do you have on tap? Because you're just like, I'm done. I'm done. I can't drink this. And so, to, yeah. So you you bring me four crawlers from uh, you know people who have been in craft brewery. I I understand they're starting a new brewery and they've done this before, but to come out swinging like this, like. If I had a keg of any of those on my house, I would be happy. If I had a, a four, you know, it's like this makes me want to go out to Alpine to have this beer. You know, yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm literally like in my head right now thinking like, what am I going to do this weekend? Because I got to get out to Al- Alpine. That That's how good this has been. Yeah. So the, so I guess uh, Tuesday night was chaos out there, right? That's when like all the delinquents went out there from, from Burning Beard. Uh, so like the, <laughs> the lady bastards. On, yeah. On, <laughs> Those uh, delinquents. Um, she had said it was just absolutely lunacy. And then um, it was crazy. Like we were there. We like, we left by probably three thirty four o'clock, like by, by four o'clock, I think we were gone. And it was like getting pretty wild in there. It was full. I mean, yeah. it was like, yeah. I mean, it was, Crazy there were people. a couple tables available outside, but not yep. too many. I mean, it was there was. I went in and bought some meat stuff from the barbecue place next door. There was Whoa, not a restaurant. There's a barbecue place. No, it's there? not food. It's, it's like it's, a pellet grilled store. It? Yeah, it's they got uh, smokers in there and everything. I was thinking food because you know. and the gal actually grilled up or smoked up some uh, some uh, tenderloin, tenderloin yeah. and we got the samples out of it. Hey. That's one of my favorite things to smoke, pork tenderloins. That's that's a delicious smoke. It's because it's the easiest thing to smoke. It is the easiest thing to smoke. (laughs) Time and time, flavor and cost. Yeah, absolutely. That's where you want to go. I agree. But what's uh, what's the best beer you had this week, Charlie? Oh shoot! Um, Have to loop back. I'm going to say that uh, that bells. There you go. Yeah, it was. It's it's just it's it's in my zone, you know. Uh But uh, I mean, if you want me, we did have the uh, the green cheek uh, cask 
the, beer for the, the pregame. Strictly speaking. Strictly speaking cask. Which yeah. actually was better than the cans. I enjoyed that cask, by the way. Well, that's been sitting in the fridge for a while. Burning beer. Old, yeah. Old, old, old. Jake, Jake says his favorite was the new Irish stout out of Burning Beard, the Old Moon. I On think, Nitro, is right? it Madness or Rising? No, it's Madness. Madness. Okay, yeah, it that one is delicious. It's a, it's it's I, it's the best Irish stout that I've had. Dry Irish stout I've had uh, west of Ireland because I've had Guinness, <laughs> so I can say since, that. Yeah. since the Guinness, you since the Guinness, see. I ch- yeah. well, since the Guinness, I drink eternally in Ireland, in Dublin. Um, for me, I, okay, so I have I have one that I just had last night because I went down and did some pickup at uh, um, m- uh, Modern Times, the Mostra Park that. Just can't. They just tapped it on Wednesday. Mostra Park. Well, they had the Mostra Tones, which was delicious. The Mostra Park might be the most smoothest, creamiest, non-adjunct stout I have ever had. Hmm. It is just delicious. Like there's is there no adjuncts in that. I, I'm that, just wondering why you didn't of. bring one. Do you to, want me to look us? up to double check? I thought there was like. Uh, I f- is I it vanilla, vanilla in there? Because I. F- you know, I'm I just was, wondering why you didn't bring it. I couldn't. I thought you got one. I did, but I can't pick them up till next week. Well, okay. Sorry about Lucky that. Story, yeah, that's but, getting phenomenal uh, ratings. It says uh, it's it's nights out. It is I I because I I mean you know I'm a stout guy. I like a lot of stouts. Right. Hey, I'm I like drinking, a lot of stouts. I just drinking what, my fair share of stouts. Yeah, this says it's Stugats. a blend of bourbon barrel aged uh, Monsters Park Imperial Stout. Seriously stellar batch on most drinks. Fugazi. Coffee. As if that weren't <laughs> enough, we topped it with a whole shebang of uh, toasted and untoasted coconut, cacao oh, okay. nibs, and toasted almonds. So maybe that's why it's so damn good. Oh, yeah. No yeah. adjuncts, though, right? No, I, you know, I, you know, I'm, I've, mis- I've been mistaken before. Yeah, sign me up for another couple of those cans. Uh, toasted coconuts, cocoa nibs, toasted almonds. It is, uh, it. It's one of those ones like you, you drink you when you drink a stout you don't want to sip it and drink, you're like I just want to I want more of that I want more of that I want more of that um, yeah I picked up a ton of cans if you want some more I'll get you some more I can, I'm all in for that the, I, I would definitely the limit uh, just went up to whatever I want so get them anybody Jake, I'll take another uh, I'll take Cup, another three. two three yeah. get them Charlie yeah how many cans cans four. Four can- okay, so the seven. Okay, all right. Shoot, now I got work to do. <laughs> you better get a truck. Um, Short drive. Yeah. So I went. Uh, I went to Modern Times this this last week. Um, I think the the I just had. Um, I went last uh, last week, and I'm trying to, trying to look me. back. Hey, yeah, I screwed it down there last hey, he's, Saturday. He's finding he's finding beers on the side, Charlie. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty bad about it, so, but I'm excited to hear what he has to say. Hey, so I got this. Uh, um, I got that mug club at the uh, at the North Park. Um, the fla- it's the Flavor Dome, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, like, yes. What'd yeah, you have so down you there? Like a, what's that? What'd you have down there? So you get like you get. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Charlie. Likes to call me cheap. I like to call myself thrifty. So if I pay for 16 ounces of beer and get 21, I'm all in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like every other beer's free, right? Oh, yeah, exactly. Cheaters. Phenomenal. And then the respect you get when you're down there with all those neck beards and they're looking at me and they're like, Phew. you got you got you got the handle and right, they're exactly. like they're they're, they're, they're drinking out of a shot glass and you're yeah, drinking exactly. out of a they're like, you know, you get a little respect. The mug club. Yep, no, it's great. But I think I just had uh, I just I, I I've been running that like they're pilsners or dude what's they it? They're phenomenal. Yeah. What is that? They, uh, they're uh, speaking. Of, uh, the other one I had down there was Lilliput. They're ju- they just can released it again. It's the second variation. It is cleaner and crisper than the first one. Wow. It's actually better than the previous version. If I actually I was <laughs> I bought one four pack and then I went and had a glass. I'm like, I'll take two more of those. Yeah. You know, at like. You know, it's a reasonable price. It's a four pack. I think it was like thirteen, fourteen dollars for a four pack. Right. I was like, I'm going on vacation, sitting around a campfire. That's what I want to drink. Yeah. All Absolutely. afternoon. Right. Yeah. No, they're um big fan of, of what they got going on down there. It's a really cool little spot. 
And yeah. uh, they, what is it, the Ab- Abaddon? Or, Abaddon. Yeah. Abaddon. It's phenomenal. It's super A- good. Abad- Abaddon, I, they have made that so many times. What's that, Abaddon? It's a uh, German style lager. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the big brown yep. swirly can. Yeah, they like, they uh, originally yeah, made it, they, they originally made it in a 16 ounce can. And then they started Delish. putting it in the, the what they call the uh, stovepipe can um, at like 19.2 ounces. It is uh, it is the best lager I have ever had, and I've been to Germany and I've drank in lagers in Germany. You know what? I, I will I'm say a lager that part. Freak, and I want to taste some more of that because I I remember it. I just don't remember being wildly good. It well, was great. Next, next time we have a podcast, Charlie, I will bring you. A, next a time we're having one tomorrow. What are you talking about? What time? <laughs> I'll be here. <laughs> We're going to seven days a week. Yeah. We're going to just do one every day. <laughs> podcast Arama. 24 7. Just there, drinking there's, beer. There's something called. Um, we have just rotations yeah. of people coming in. There's something called the dog days of podcasting oh, in August. And yes. every day in August, you do a podcast. Let's I'm do in. it. I'm in. I'm not. You know, teacher, every day I'm, I'm lager. I'm not lager here. every day. You just leave okay. that so, running. Yeah. yeah. Just leave it Open running. mic night. <laughs> Open mic. <laughs> be craziness. Bedlam. Yeah. Steve, what was your favorite beer? Um, other than the ones we just drank, which were just unbelievably good. Um, Christy and I went down to Burning Beard last week and just having the Banksy, oh, a yeah. full Banksy, Can't and just sitting there on the patio. And, oh, so oh, nice, huh? <laughs> so good. Yeah. Dude, I, they, Burning Beard is whatever they're doing it right. Like I, they're to me they're the unsung heroes of the San Diego Brewing East County Committee. Oh what? yeah, uh, there is a uh, for delinquents out there listening. There's a new bottle coming. Uh, there's a raspberry. Is it raspberry? Fr- fr- they call it a frambé or frambos. Frambos. Was it a frambé? Fruited. <laughs> It was pink, which, you know, who doesn't like anything pink? Should we go after potty now? I think it's time for <laughs> after potty. <laughs> we should wrap it up. Yep, yeah, wrap it up and we'll after potty. All right, hey, so there it is. Uh, so, McElhaney, I think we're all uh, we're all fans. Ooh, we fans. Uh, ran through. Big fans. Glad you know, they're back. Four of their, uh, four of their, um, uh, of their beers. The uh, What time do they open tomorrow? Uh, <laughs> 2 p.m. I think it's 2 p.m. Wow. It's a little late. <laughs> I'd yeah, be pounding on sure. their doors at like 145. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, so there it is. Um, man, I think fans all all around. You know, they're they're blonde ale, uh, they're they're pale ale, IPA and then double IPA. All phenomenal. Nelson for me, or months as months. It was. Months. Nelson. Nelson yeah. yeah. That good. rye. That Nelson. rye IPA. All I good. Think. Steve, what was yours? Which the last one. The last one, yeah. the, uh, the, last, the last wild one, child. Sure. Wild child and Charlie was the blonde guy. Or did you go with the... I'm going to go with the blonde. I'm going to stick with that. That was my number one. Uh, you know what? No, Wild Child was my number yeah. one. Then then the blonde. Sorry. Yep. There it is. I Change mean, it I think up. fans all around. Cheers. Cheers. Stay safe. <laughs> Clink. <laughs>
It should also be noted that the opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the participants and are not endorsed by the participants' previous, current, or future employers or advertisers. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.